Kassan village is this row of old-style longhouses newly built as an Indian cultural center. In 1951, the government lifted its ban on potlatching, the ceremonial feasts and dances that were the very heart of the Indian social and cultural structure. This meant that traditional art could resume, that totem poles needn't continue to fall and rot, and songs and dances and masks become lost. One building is an art school. Another, the house of the distant past, depicts life before the arrival of the Europeans. In it, you see people going about daily routine. A woman cooks by lifting hot rocks from the fire and putting them into a box filled with water. And a shaman treats a patient. The figures are life-size, so you get a feeling for how spacious these houses were. Carving is a mainstay of the Kassan project. Here's a totem pole commissioned by a woman in Kispiox, due to be raised in a few weeks. That calls for ceremony, including a new blanket to wear at the pole raising. The women first draw the pattern for it on paper, and from that cut cloth to applique. One robe they showed the Kirks has 2,000 buttons on it. Here the number is in the hundreds. Buttons became popular when Hudson's Bay Company first introduced them. They catch the firelight during a dance performance. Poles are made as part of various replication programs and on order for tourists or others at about $100 a foot. Several carvers work on one pole, and we asked Victor Mowat here how they divide the work. He says sometimes they draw straws, Sometimes the project director assigns the figures to each man. Nobody really knows when or where the art form of totem poles first arose. One authority claims it was here on the upper Skeena River. Walter Harris is working on a talking stick here. But I suppose no matter what the object being carved, the carving represents an urge to express something beyond oneself. And it's a deep-seated urge here at Kassan. Mr. Harris is completing a commission for the Royal Bank in Vancouver, a bear of red cedar to hold a talking stick of yellow cedar. Part of the Kassan project is a dance troupe that travels throughout North America. Neil Sterrett, project manager, shows us their newly finished talking dummy to be used, I think, to open the dance performances. The troupe has boxes and boxes of costumes along on their trips, robes and masks, and talking sticks and rattles, now this talking dummy. They also take along artwork for sale. <laughs> 